the Ghostbusters. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster oh, makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. Heads up. It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Got back from seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. What a mouthful. Um, and let's just go through the history of my Ghostbusters because it is kind of interesting. I know a lot of people, especially my age, have this great fondness for the Ghostbusters legacy. I saw it like five or six years ago. I think it was like the 20th or 25th anniversary of the original Ghostbusters. And I did go to theaters and see it. And I remember enjoying it. There's probably a review on my channel where I reviewed it originally. I don't remember what I gave it, but I do remember enjoying it. I did think it was one of those movies that I think people uh, overhype, like The Goonies is one I always use as a reference that people tend to love, and I just thought it was okay. I never saw Ghostbusters 2. I did go see the female Ghostbusters that no one ever wants to talk about. The Paul Was it Paul Feig who directed that? Um, and that one was pretty mad. And then I went and saw Ghostbusters Afterlife. I went into Ghostbusters Afterlife thinking, gosh, I just don't know if Ghostbusters is going to be for me. And I came out really enjoying it. I liked, uh, McKenna Grace. I liked kind of how they went into the backstory and tied it together. Um, I liked Paul Rudd's character. I liked the whole, uh, the whole family, the Spangler family, uh, in that. And I did like the callback at the end. So I really loved Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, and I was like, okay, this is really cool. I think I gave it a four out of five. Um, and so then when the trailers came out for this new one, I was like, wow, that trailer doesn't look very good. But in my mind, I'm thinking I really liked Ghostbusters Afterlife. So I can't wait to go see this. Um, so I went and saw it and, um, it's good. I, cause I, I watched some reviews and they've kind of been all over the place. I think it's got hovering like a 45, 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Some people seem to really like it. Some people think it's just okay. And some people are hating on it. Um, for me, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I can see some people's points. It's got a lot of extra characters. It really does, um, take a long time to get into the main crux of the story and it does feel like it's because we have all these characters that we have to do little side plots for everybody um but then at the same time we never really those side plots don't really matter for a whole lot of it so that is probably my complaint um the story is like it's two, it takes place two years after afterlife the spangler family including paul rudd who i guess they got married they never really would say 100 percent, but I mean, I'm pretty sure they did. They've moved back to New York. They've reopened the Ghostbusters headquarters in the uh, uh, fire station. And um, they're just tracking down ghosts. And then you have this whole, all these different plots. Like McKenna Grace is too young to be a Ghostbuster. Mayor doesn't want her doing it anymore. So she's kind of off on her own. Um, you've got Kumail Ninjani is one of the new characters. He comes in. He's basically just trying to get rid of his mom's old stuff. And uh, kind of gets looped into the whole uh, whole story because of his past, his lineage. Um, but in him, of all the new of all the new characters that they throw in here, I liked him probably the most. He was funny to me. Um, it's going to take a certain level of humor. Like I, I thought it was hilarious, but I know some people didn't think it was quite funny. His character. I laughed a lot in this movie. Um, I thought a lot of the humor worked and I still really like the Spangler family and Paul Rudd. And, um, I like the OG cast and I like the story here. I like the villain. Did it take way too long to get into what the villain was even doing and why? And yes. And then, so then the end, it does feel like they cut a lot of the end to try and just get it over with, which was uh, weird to me. Um, but I don't know. I, and, and, and it's, that's why I said this is kind of weird for me. Cause I'm not like super nostalgic for the OG, uh, Ghostbusters and they're in here. I will say, uh, Bill Murray is barely in here. So if you really like Bill Murray, <laughs> he's, he is the definition of cameo almost in this movie. Um, he, he's barely here, but, uh, 
the other ones, they're, they're here. And I, I don't know. I kind of like the way that they're kind of blending the old and the new. It's mostly new, but there's still a little bit old there. Some people I've seen have like, can we just focus on the new? And I would be fine with that because that seems to be my favorite part of it too. Um, but did I like leave this thinking I don't want to see any more? No, I would gladly go see some more of these Ghostbuster movies. Um, the special effects are good. Like I said, it's funny. There is a little bit of heart. I wish we could get more into it, but uh, McKenna Grace is great. She's a star. She's been a star. She's great in this movie too. Um, so yeah. I enjoyed Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um, even the villain was kind of cool. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give it... I, I'm going to say I liked Afterlife a little bit better. And I think I gave Afterlife a four. So I think I'm going to give this a three and a half. But I did enjoy it. I will buy it. I will add it to the collection. So, yeah, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh, a four and a, or three and a half out of five. Uh, what do you guys think of Ghostbusters? And until next time, this is Randy Cage. Peace out.